So I'm going to answer the second question first, which is how to prepare for your visit. You're going to want to learn as much as you can about your family history of cancer so that you know who had it, what type of cancer they had, and about what age they were first diagnosed with cancer. All of those questions are going to be asked of you during the visit. And obviously, you're not going to be able to know every last thing about every person, but just try to find out as much as you can and know what you know and what you don't know. The genetic counselor, when, when she or he talks to you about your family history, he or she is going to ask you about your close relatives, so your mom, your dad, brothers and sisters, your children. Also about your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, and if you have grandchildren, your grandchildren, nieces and nephews. The genetic counselor is probably also going to ask you about your cousins, so your, the children of your aunts and uncles on both sides of the family. So try to find out as much as you can. Some people have very large families, and so that can take a lot of time, but get as much as you can so that when the genetic counselor is assessing the family history to determine if any genetic testing is indicated and what genetic testing is indicated, knowing what's going on in that huge family is going to really help drive that conversation. So that's what you can do to prepare for the visit. Now, what should you expect when you have the visit? Most genetic counselor appointments last anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes. The genetic counselor is going to ask you about your personal history, so if you've ever had cancer, if you're doing screenings like colonoscopies or ultrasounds or mammograms. So know what's going on in your personal history, what you've been doing, what you haven't started yet. That doesn't mean you should have started it, but just know what you've been doing. The genetic counselor will then go through your family history, asking all those questions that we've already kind of raised earlier. And then, so the beginning part is kind of going to be you doing a lot of talking, sharing information. And then the genetic counselor is going to be assessing your personal history and family history to determine if there's a potential genetic cause. And if there is, the genetic counselor is going to educate you about what the potential genetic testing is that could be indicated, why it's indicated, and then walk you through the process. How does the genetic test work? Um, typically, it's going to be a blood draw or a saliva sample. Um, the insurance companies have gotten better about covering genetic tests if they're indicated. So if your genetic counselor is saying, yep, I think this test is indicated based upon your personal and family history, odds are the insurance company is going to cover it. It may take a little bit of work, but should most likely be covered. And then the genetic counselor is also going to explain the timeline. So how long will it take to get the test results? And then how are you going to get the test results? Are you going to come back in person? Are they going to be called out to you? Creating that next step so you know what's coming. And then the genetic counselor is also going to give you information about kind of what those results could be. It could be positive that they found something genetic. It could be negative. Nothing was found in the genes. And sometimes genetic test results can be inconclusive where something was found that most likely isn't significant but we don't have a lot of data about that finding. And so we can't conclusively say if it's significant or not. And so that would be an inconclusive result. That's not the most common result by any means. And don't let that scare you from doing genetic testing because even if it's, we don't know the significance, we have at least know more information than when we started. And your genetic counselor is going to interpret it for you. It's going to give you more information. It's going to walk you through it so that you end up feeling comfortable that there is a conclusive overall answer. As well as then, the genetic counselor is going to talk about what the results can mean for you and the family, how it can change your management, giving examples of that, um, so that you really feel informed about the test that you're having. You understand why you're having it, what's going to happen, what the next steps are, and what it means for you and the family. Genetic testing can take anywhere from one to two weeks to a month or longer. It just depends on the genetic test. Once you get results, your genetic counselor is going to go over those results with you, interpret them, and then give you guidance about what that means, what screenings you need to be doing, what prevention steps may be available for both you as well as your family members so that you really feel educated and empowered and in control of your health. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Harness, and I want to share with you important information that I believe that every 
newly diagnosed patient with breast cancer needs to know. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor. And I want every woman to know about personalized breast cancer treatment and the genomic test. A test that helps guide a woman and her doctor to the best treatment options for her. Pass it on.